Even in this video, we will be trying to find a relation between the gravitational flux through a surface with the masses considered in the system. Okay, so let us say you have a mass, a particle of mass m. Okay, it has mass capital M. And you construct an imaginary surface around it. Okay, it can be of any shape that you want to. Okay, uh, something like this. All right. And now we want to calculate the flux, gravitational flux through this surface. Okay, so this is the gravitational field due to a point mass will look like uh, and the formula for flux phi is the gravitational field times dotted with with the area vector okay and this area vector is this area its vector and its uh, direction is perpendicular to the surface so the magnitude is proportional to the area and its direction is normal to the surface okay now we shall start by considering a small area okay let let, let it have an area of uh, let's say da okay so the gravitational field through this area will look something like this okay and the area vector will be normal Let's say something like this. Now, if the angle between them, okay, is theta, so a very small flux, let's say d phi, which will be equal to g, a gravitational field at this point, times d a, okay, will be equal to g d a cos theta. All right. Now, what is the gravitational field? due to a point uh, mass it is minus gm upon r square minus due because it's in the inward direction okay so times da cos theta now remember r is this length okay now what is da cos theta da cos theta is actually this surface okay the component of the surface perpendicular to your field vector okay so as in our previous video we have uh, talked about solid angles and this was a solid angle so this is r we have an area a the solid angle omega is uh, given by a by r square so s a is perpendicular to this line Okay, in this case, d a cos theta does the job of capital A. So, d a cos theta by r square, we can write it as a small solid angle. So, we can write this expression as minus g m small solid angle d omega. Okay, this is equal to d phi. Now, we need to calculate the flux through this entire surface. So, we'll integrate all these small area elements, okay, the flux to be all these small area elements. So, the total flux, okay, capital phi is given by the integral over the surface, okay, of all such small fluxes, all such small d phi, okay. And now it's a uh, time to introduce a new notation. So, since we are integrating upon a surface, we will draw a circle right here. So, this means, so if your integral is written like this, this means that you are integrating over the entire surface into consideration. So, the surface integral of d phi will be equal to minus g m, okay, you are integrating all such small ang solid angles. All, all these small solid angles now what is this term right over here this term is nothing but the solid angle subtended by an entire circle 
or entire sphere because you know you can see this is one small da d omega this is another small d omega and if you integrate them all over the surface you will all such d omegas you will get the solid angle subtended by the entire sphere at one point which is 4 pi steradians as we have seen in our previous video so we can just substitute it right here okay it will be minus 4 pi gm so the flux through any arbitrary surface okay of a single point mass is given by minus 4 pi gm now what if your surf your mass is outside the surface that you are taking so if let's say this is your surface okay and you have a mass right here so this is how the field will look like okay so it's all inward but here's an, the important part okay all the field that's coming in the surface is also leaving it okay so which means there is no net flux of this field through the surface in in this figure all the field was coming into the surface but in this figure the field that's coming in is leaving out so the net flux in this situation is zero okay so if you're you have an external mass so external masses do not contribute in this flux so phi in this case is equal to zero now what if we have a general configuration of masses so we have masses spread out and we want to consider the flux through a given surface so you have some internal mass and some external mass let's see what happens so we have this configuration we have n masses inside they are represented by capital m and you have some p masses outside this surface okay and we need to calculate the flux through this entire surface okay so what did we do we took an area element uh, and we evaluated g dot da okay so let's say g is i don't know looks something like this okay now the important thing is that this field right here is not the field due to m1 m2 or m3 m4 it is due to all the masses of the system okay so you have this g is due to this m1 m2 m3 to mn capital m and small m1 small m2 small m3 small m4 so on till mp so this is the net resultant of all such fields okay and this is your da vector of course so we'll be calculating phi which is so surface integral g dot d a so this is our small okay d phi differential flux infinitesimal flux okay and we are integrating this over the surface so that's why we have this circular symbol right here okay and this g is due to all the masses so we can write this as g due to m1 plus g due to m2 so on g due to m yeah, n masses okay plus g due to small m1 plus g due to small m2 so on till g due to small m let's say pth mass dot da okay now the a is the same for a the area is the same okay so we'll landing will be land will be left with g m1 dot da plus integral g m2 dot da so until g m n not da okay and the flux due to these small masses okay integral g m1 dot da so until integral g m some pth mass dot da 
okay so the net flux is the sum of the individual fluxes now the important thing to note here is that these masses are external masses okay and external mass as we have seen okay they don't contribute to the flux so this term here is zero so is the term for g m2 m3 m4 and so on okay and so this is also zero so the entire contribution due to these external masses is zero so we are left with this entire term right here is all zero so we are left with these masses these internal masses okay and we have calculated this result okay but that was minus 4 pi gm so for mass 1 it will look like minus 4 pi g m1 plus okay for second mass it is minus 4 pi g m2 plus and so on till minus 4 pi g m your nth mass okay and you can take minus 4 pi g common you're left with minus 4 pi g m1 plus m2 so on till mn you can write it in the final form as the total flux okay is equal to the surface integral of g dot da this is the net field equal to minus 4 pi g so m1 m2 m3 m1 plus m2 plus m3 and so on till mn is the total mass that is inside the surface not outside okay so you can simply write it as m intern m i n for short and this result is known as the gauss law for gravity okay it's generally a gauss law is mainly using electromagnetism but here we have related it with gravity okay now what are the applications of this law this we'll be studying in our future video till then stay tuned and thanks for watching